Father, we thank you because we are yours. We thank you because we are yours. We are yours. We are in you and you are in us. You in us, us in you. A holy union. A holy union. We thank you. We thank you. Because he that is joined with Christ is one spirit with him. We thank you for this holy union that you have given us with yourself, with your son and with your spirit. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Because of this holy union, we can live victoriously in this world. Because of this holy union, we can live your very life in this world. Because of this holy union, we can reign on earth. We can live like you. We can live like God in this world. Because of this union. Because of this eternal life. Indestructible. Unending. Unchanging. We thank you. For the life that flows in us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We exalt you. Thank you, Lord, for another moment in your presence. Thank you for this worship service. Because we, without, without doubt, we are sure you are in our midst. Because your word says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. So we are very sure. We are very sure. And we can, we can feel your presence tangibly in our lives and in our midst this morning. And Father, so we give you praise. And Lord, we ask for help this morning. That you cause us to come to your very presence. You cause us to see your face, to see your heart. Help us to see your heart. To see the things you have for us. By your spirit, open our eyes to see the things you have prepared for us. The things you have prepared for us. Let our eyes see it. And let our heart, our heart grasp them. Let our hearts be able to hold them. And help us to walk in them. That may live the very lives you have ordained for us. Even before the foundations of the earth. We give you praise Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Good morning church. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Just greet somebody. Welcome somebody to church. Sister Amarachi, it's great to see you. Sister Joy, welcome back. Welcome back from, from your holiday. <laughs> Sister Joy went on break. Welcome back. Oi Martins, welcome, welcome, welcome to church. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Praise Jesus forevermore. Glory to Jesus. Those people that are absent to the right and their knees do not allow them to enter church next week. And let's hope they will, some of them will come. I know that some of them will not come because I know where some of them are. So we will not let them enter church next week. Praise Jesus forevermore. It's always very beautiful to be in God's presence. Always very, very beautiful. God's presence is the best place we can be. Amen. So the psalmist said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Praise Jesus forevermore. Praise Jesus forevermore. So the other Lord is not where he's like, oh, it's Sunday, it's Sunday again. Ah! Tomorrow is Sunday again. I'm going to church again. Those of people, when Sunday is coming, they're already thinking they are sad. <laughs> if they are sad, the house of God is not supposed to make you sad. And it's not a routine to that. Okay, oh, let's just go to church. Don't worry, very soon I'll start a series on the local assembly. Now begin to understand God's mind to the local church. You really love the church when I start a series. When I, and I start showing you God's plan. For the local assembly, you you really you want us to be doing church Monday to the way to like Saturday Sunday, morning, afternoon, evening. I tell I show you your local assembly. I'm already preparing it. It's one of the series I'm preparing already. Praise Jesus forever more. The local assembly. That's not what I'm teaching this for. No, I'll start writing the local assembly in your book. But I, it's very important I do a teaching on and God has been talking to me about it. I have to show us because many of us don't appreciate the power of the local assembly. We don't know what the local assembly is. So we just the way we relate with church. Oh, it's church, Jerry. Let's shall go to church on Sunday. Let's shall go to church Sunday morning. Sunday, Sunday. If you, know the, if you understand the local assembly, you always want to be around whenever there's a meeting. Praise Jesus forevermore. You won't be, oh, let's shall go on Sunday. You won't be sad. You know, church does not give some people joy. <laughs> and I understand. But I don't understand again. <laughs> you get. You might find yourself in a local assembly where you are not glad where it's not you are not being fed you are not you understand that i should pray to god to lead you to the right local assembly praise jesus forevermore i should not be in a local assembly because of the color because of the light because of the big big instruments no no that's not the reason i'm not saying because we, we are going to have big big instruments so you have to know that 
And we got massive instruments that we have to pay, start to pay yourself. We have beautiful, we have beautiful, massive, massive orchestra. You understand? <laughs> massive instruments. You understand? But your first reason in the local assembly is not, it's not the massive instruments, it's not the color of the light, it's not all those preferities. It's not that, I mean, I mean people have big, big, big cars, then maybe I can make connection. You are not local assembly for connection. The local assembly will bring connection to you. Ah, am I am I talking about the local assembly? <laughs> the local assembly will bring connection to you, but you are not there for connection. You understand? Praise Jesus forevermore. So many wrong reasons, many wrong reasons why people choose the local assembly, and eventually they get it now get disappointed. Praise Jesus forevermore. The first reason for local assembly is the provision for the health of your soul, the health of your spirit and your soul. Praise Jesus forevermore. So you find a local assembly where you are being fed correctly with God's word, with prayer and all of that, and where there's love and community, just be glad. Praise Jesus forevermore. And you are in that local assembly, I promise you. I'm not lying to you. Sister Marachi, you are there, right? You are there already. You know, you are already feeling the spirit, right? You felt it from the first day we came to your shop, right? Praise Jesus forevermore. So, I, I was glad when they said let us go into the house of God. The house of God should bring joy to our heart. It's not because he chose to be glad. It's because that is always the response of the call to go into God's house. So when they say, let, let us go into the house of God, and you don't feel joy, maybe where you are going is not the house of God. <laughs> or maybe something is wrong with you. But if the child of God is, is correctly aligned to God and the church of God, if you say, let us go into the house of God, what should be your response? It's always joy. Praise Jesus, everyone. Enough of that. So welcome to church this morning. Can you welcome somebody to church again? Welcome somebody to church again. Just welcome. You don't, don't leave your seat. Just welcome. Just look back. Look, look sideways. Welcome to church. Praise Jesus forevermore. All right. So we've been on a particular series. We started this series last week Sunday, which we titled "Thinking God's Thoughts." Praise Jesus. Thinking what? Thinking God's thought. So I said that Lord began to talk, talk to me how that I need to show us how we need to to think like Him. Praise Jesus forevermore. We need to what? Think like God. Because the agenda, God's plan for us in this world is that we live like Him. Because He says, those who have received of the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall what? Shall reign in life. Praise Jesus forevermore. So the plan of God for us is to do what? Is to reign in life. And reigning is only characteristics of God. Praise Jesus but God does not just reign because He is God. <laughs> and God is not just God because He is God. God reigns because of His thinking process, because of the way He thinks, because of His thoughts. And what makes Him God is His thoughts. Because a man's thoughts are the sum of his life. A man's life is summed up in his what? In his thoughts. So if you don't think rightly, you can't live rightly. Are you following my friends? And I'm not just talking in terms of sin sinful abuse, of course, that's very, that's very crucial and important, and an important part of it. You understand? When you think rightly, relative to sin, you're going to live rightly. I follow my friends. But I'm even more particular about living a victorious life. Breakthrough, living a victorious life over sickness, over disease, over affliction, over Satan, over every walk of darkness, and over sin, over death. I follow my friends. But the way we come into this kind of victorious life is the way we think. Praise Jesus. So I began to, I hope I'll, be, I'll just be able to conclude on Job today and pick and continue the series next week Sunday. So I began to lay foundation on this series by beginning to look at the life of Job. Praise Jesus forevermore. I said to look at what? The life of Job. And I said, let's show you something about, life, about Job's life. And I mentioned that a man's life does not go in the direction of his holiness and fear of God. He goes where? In the direction of his thoughts. Praise Jesus forevermore. Your life always comes, come, always what? Is always your life, the outcome of your life, is always a product of your thoughts. It's not necessarily a product of your holiness and your fear of God. What becomes of you in this world is not necessarily what? A product of your holiness and your fear of God. Of course, what I said, and it's important you understand, and if you've been following my teaching for a long time, you know I'm not 
I don't endorse sin because David does not endorse sin. You understand? So I said, whilst so you need to understand that I'm not I'm not saying holiness and fear of God are not important. They are very crucial. You understand? They are they are they are foundations of the Christian faith. Praise Jesus forevermore. So I said, whilst you must perfect your holiness and your fear of God, you must also perfect your thoughts to align with the, with the thoughts of God. Because if you are holy and you fear God, without thinking like God in some matters, in some aspects of life, you will suffer. Satan will, Satan will, Satan will destroy you. Satan will afflict you. I follow my friends. So I, began, I also showed, I didn't open it, but I just mentioned the life of that prophet in the scripture. The widow of Syrophat, right? That the widow of Syrophat. Where the, where the debtors came to take her two sons. That's another widow. Syrophat is the one that fed Elijah. The Isha one widow in the Bible. In one of the books of Kings. Praise Jesus forevermore. So that particular widow, the Bible said that the debtors came to take her two sons. I follow my friends. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. So, while the woman was reporting the case to Elisha, right, she told Elisha that, man of God, you know that my husband, your servant, you understand? My husband, who was also a prophet, you know that while he was alive, he feared what? He feared the Lord. I follow my friends. So, the prophet of God feared the Lord while he was alive. But despite the fact that he feared the Lord, he found that he lived a life of poverty. So much so that he lived in debt all his life. So much so that when they came to, to reckon his debt with his wife after his death, they were not just going to take one son. They were going to take what? The two sons. So how much, how much could that debt be? That means the man lived in debt all his life. And it was what? A prophet of God. Praise Jesus forevermore. So that means that being a prophet does not, does not necessarily deliver you from hardship, from affliction. Being a pastor does not deliver you from affliction. Fearing God. He feared God. Myself, your, your, my husband, your servant, fear the Lord. So fearing God, holiness, does not necessarily deliver you from hardship. You have to learn to think like God. Praise Jesus forevermore. You have to do what? You have to learn to think like God. So I now began to look at the life of Job. We began to look at the life of Job from Job chapter 1. Praise Jesus forevermore. From the book of Job chapter 1. Uh, uh, where is Job? Who thought Job away from my Bible? <laughs> Job chapter 1. Job. From the book of Job. If you are looking for a job, just go, just go and read the book of Job. <laughs> the book of Job. The book of Job. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. So, we began to verify from the life of Job that a man's life does not actually necessarily go in the direction of, the, of his holiness and his fear of God. It goes in the direction of his thoughts. So, the Bible spoke of Job from chapter 1 of the book of Job, verse 1, that there was a man in the land of us, praise Jesus forevermore, there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and the man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Praise Jesus. So, we confirmed and saw from this book of Job, chapter 1, that Job feared the Lord, was perfect, upright, in all of his ways. And God confirmed that when he called Satan, that have you observed Job? But, and long when we saw how Job's life went, amen, we saw the things that came that came his way. Now, I told us, I, 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 I hope you're going to listen to last sequence. I don't want to go back too much. I don't want to go back too much on because I have some things to say today. So I told us that, so God called, Job, called God, 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 Satan. Look at Job. He fears me and all of that. Have you considered that then? Satan says, because you're protecting me and all that, blah, 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 blah. Now, many times we would have thought, as I taught before, that God was, 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 was trying Job that God caused Satan to try Job so that God can prove to Satan that Job truly really loved God. That Job was not serving God because of, because of the things that God was blessing him with. Praise Jesus forevermore. 
But find that, okay, apart from that, that that's not necessarily true. And I'm going to show you some scriptures that actually there were thoughts in Job's heart that did not align with the thoughts of God. Praise Jesus for everyone. That Job had secret fears. And that even though Job feared the Lord and was holy, we found that eventually his life went in the direction of his fears. So now we're going to see from Job chapter 3, verse 26, verse 25. Job 3, 25. If you look at Job chapter 3, verse 25. So the Bible says, For the thing which I greatly feared is what? Is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is what? Is come unto me. Have you seen that in your scripture? So Job said what? For the thing which I greatly feared what? Is come upon me. And that which I what? I was afraid of is come unto me. So, so, what do you see here? If we not come to this scripture, <laughs> and we just say that Job a perfect man, and not perfect man, blah, 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 offer sacrifices, would you have known that there were quiet fears in Job's heart? He wouldn't have known, right? And even this scripture was not written. Amen. But Job said the thing I feared most, the thing which I greatly, he didn't say the thing I feared, the thing, the thing which, as you may say, the thing which I feared, will have still had mercy on me. But the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of. So Job had secret fears in his heart. He had thoughts that were not God's thoughts. So, mind you, the things that happened to Job were what? The things that have been what? They have been thinking. Praise Jesus, forevermore. Now, this is recorded after both temptations had happened to him. I'll show you the second, second part of the temptation. Of the trial. Are you following my friends? So, all the things that Job went through, his children dying, all his thoughts ending, were products of his secret fears were products of his thoughts. I follow my friends. So actually, it was not Satan doing Job. I follow my friends. It was Job's thoughts and his fears doing what? Coming to pass. Are you with my friends? It was what? It was Job's thoughts and his fears what? Coming to pass. You know, Satan did not know that it was a thought in Job's heart. Now, what God was doing to Job was that God was confronting the fears in Job's heart. God was confronting the thoughts in the heart of Job that were not aligned with God's thoughts. The thoughts in the heart of Job that were not in alignment with the thoughts of God were being confronted by God. <laughs> so when Satan thought that God was, okay, trying Job, blah, 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 God was doing something to Job. God wanted to change Job. Because even though Job was wealthy, even though Job was rich and all of that, even though Job feared the Lord, Job has not actually begun to live in the fullness of God's life and God's promises. Praise Jesus forevermore. Job has not begun what? To live in the fullness of the life and the purpose and the promises of God. And uh, a man cannot live in the fullness of God's life and promises and purposes if his thoughts, if there are still thoughts in his heart, that are opposed to the touch of God. If there are still thoughts in his heart, if there are still thoughts in your heart, my brothers and my sisters, that are not in alignment with God's thought, you can't, you can't live in the, you can't live the full life that God has for you. So God has to come to confront our thoughts, our secret fears. So what God was doing to Job, Amen. You know, Satan thought that he was, he was destroying. You know, Satan thought that Satan was destroying Job. Actually, God was working out a miracle in Job's heart. He was working out a miracle of a thought that is aligned with the thoughts of God. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. You know, Satan thought that, okay, let's destroy. I'm going to destroy Job, all that Job has through this process. But actually, it was a process for God to do what? To bring Job's thought into alignment with God's thought. I feel like my friends. Even though Job was not the tempter, even though God was not the tempter, God does not tempt man with evil. And he's not tempted with evil. And we found that when the woman asked the question last week, we found out that Satan that was tempting Job, not God. Do you understand? God is not tempted with sickness. Don't say, God is just testing me with this sickness, this poverty I'm going through. It's God that is testing me. I want to prove my love for him. God is not God. 
I follow my friends. But God might have a purpose in it. Do you understand, my friend? So, never you think that all the bad, bad things you are going to do, all the, all the hardship you are going to do, that God that is testing you. It's not God that is testing you. It's Satan that is what? Tempting you. Are you following me? One of the things to verify whether you actually love God because you love God or you love God because of those things. I follow my friend. But God has a purpose in it. In all of those things you go through, God also has a purpose of bringing your thoughts into alignment with his thoughts. I follow my friends. Because if there's not many thoughts into alignment with his thoughts, you can't live the full life he has prepared for you. Rachel, I'm very, very happy to see you. Stephen, Apostle Stephen. <laughs> Fine, baby. Praise Jesus. Very much more. So, your thoughts have to do what? Come into alignment with what? With the thoughts of God. So, sometimes when we go through troubles, God wants to bring our thoughts into alignment. He's confronting our secret fears. Praise Jesus, Father more. He's doing what? Because many of us have secret fears. People see us only in the church, scabashing. That, eh, that sister is pretty still though. She can pray in tongues for seven hours. Whereas, she has a fear of, ah, what will I eat tomorrow? What will I eat? Hey, this is my business that is going very well. Hope it will not crumble one day. Hey, this is my marriage. Hmm. Oh, something wrong. Something will not go wrong. So, Job, even though things were working for Job, things were going very fine. Job was thinking somewhere that hope a day would not come that evil will come, evil, evil will come on me. Hope a day will not come that my children will start falling sick. Hope a day will not come that this my business enterprise will collapse. Hope a day will not come that all my sheep and others will be destroyed. You understand? Did that day come or not? Why did he come? Of his thoughts. Because Satan was so powerful. Talk to me. Because Satan was so powerful. Is it because Satan was so powerful? Because Satan wanted to tempt him. Because God wanted to test him. Because of his thoughts. So many times our thoughts are even the kickstarter of the temptations of Satan. You understand? Because God is not asked to come to confront that thought. And when God is coming to confront your thought, He permits Satan to tempt you. So Satan think He's tempting you, but God has a plan to confront your thoughts. I mean, my friends, because you must think like God. If you don't think like God, you can't live like God. Praise Jesus, never more. Shout hallelujah. Now, if you look at it, now you need to look at the book of Psalms 139. Psalms 139. Psalms 139. Praise Jesus, never more. Now, sometimes in the midst of our troubles, God's greatest objective is not to is to confront the secret face of our hearts. Do you understand? Sometimes in the what? In the midst of our troubles, God's greatest objective is to confront what? The secret face of our hearts. I follow my friends. What did I say? Sometimes what? In the midst of our troubles, God's greatest objective is to what? Confront the secret face of our hearts. That was God's, and I'll show you today, and I, I hope I'll just complete this job part today and move next week in this thinking God's thought. Praise Jesus favor more. So in all of God's confrontation of Job, in all of Job's troubles, in all of Satan tempting Job, God had only one objective. And what was it? To confront his secret fears. Because when, when God begins to confront your secret fears, it's because he wants to transform your heart. He wants to transform your thought process so you can begin to think like him. Why? So you can begin to live like him. You can live in the fullness of life that he has planned for you. Praise Jesus forevermore. Now look at Psalms 139. And this confrontation is something we must even ask for. Amen. Because many times we don't even know the secret face of our heart. On the God that on the God starts showing, showing us. Many times we don't know our thoughts that are not in alignment with God's thoughts. On the God starts showing us. Amen. Is when God starts showing you <laughs> that you have this particular fear, then I'm like, eh? I never knew this thing was there. I never knew I was this afraid of my salary being delayed, my salary payment. Because they always pay your salary early, 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 early. You don't know that you have the fear of, hey, if you don't really pay my salary, you hunger will not kill my family. You don't know that fear was not there. It was there rather. So, God that knows that that fear is there. You understand? One day will now permit 
but your salary is delayed. Now begin to see those fears in your heart. Begin to see those fears in your heart. Then I begin to show that guy you are still afraid. Because you are still so much dependent on your salary. So you are still afraid. You are still so much afraid. So God begins to confront those thoughts. Begin to show you. And begin to show you, begin to repent. Lord, I'm sorry, I never knew I didn't trust you. I never knew all my trust in you. Lord, it's you I trust, it's you I trust. I didn't know it was because salary was coming in early. I didn't know, Lord, I didn't, Lord, I didn't know it was salary I trusted. Lord, I repent. Your thoughts now start getting what? Transformed to God's thoughts. So whether there's no salary or not, you are still thinking like God and you are living like God. So, in the midst of lack or plenty, you can do what? You can live like God. And that's what Paul learned. He said, I've learned how to what? Abound and to abase. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. I've learned how to abound and to abase. Now, God must search out our hearts. It's very important. He must do what? He must search out our hearts. And please allow him to do it. And when he's doing it, please let him do it. Can I tell you the truth? Can I help you? Many times when God is doing this conf- confrontation, is in the midst of troubles. Do you understand? He's in the midst of what? Sure. Troubles. When Satan comes to cause us trouble, sometimes what God is doing is that he's confronting your fears. Your quiet thoughts are not like God's thoughts. Praise Jesus forevermore. Your quiet thoughts are not what? Like God's thoughts. For example, we didn't know that, we didn't know what Peter was thinking until when Jesus Christ said that was the Son of Man has to die. Peter was saying that no, 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 you can't die, you can't die. Stop saying that nonsense, stop saying that nonsense. What Jesus Christ said, get behind me, Satan, for you serve all the things that what that are of God. You are an interest to me. So they were taught in as you mean that as you mean Jesus Christ did not bring about that I have to die, I have to die. Peter would not know that he had that fear of physically living without Jesus. And it's very important for you because and if Jesus did not die, even though Peter might think he had gained, that Peter had gained, but he would have lost. And God will have lost. I follow my friends. Because the gain of God and the gain of the world is in the death and resurrection of Jesus. So Peter, because of his own fears that because now you need to understand, even though, even though God, Jesus Christ said, get the behind me, Satan. I follow my friend. It's not that the Satan that was speaking directly through Peter. But that Satan had allowed, but that Peter had allowed Satan's thoughts infiltrate his heart. I follow my friend. Now you need to understand the, the background of, 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 of Peter's statement. Here is Peter who was no longer working. He had left out to follow the Lord. But even Peter was a family man, though. he had a wife and children. He had the mother in law, he had the wife taken care of in the house. But he had left teaching, he had left the business to follow the Lord. But somebody was not suffering. Why? Because the Lord was there to take care of their needs. <laughs> Guys, you understand me? Jesus was there to do what? To take care of Peter's need. Peter and his son, he was there to take care of their needs. To take care of his family, take care of every disciple and their family. Because Jesus was there They needed to visit the hospital. Because even when his mother in law was sick, he didn't find the nearest, 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 the nearest physician. He, he didn't spend a dime. Jesus Christ just made the word to touch her hand for her to rise up. You are not saying you want to die. Which die is that one? Oh, you die, you die less. You, oh, 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 <laughs> Peter, what are you saying with your mouth? You want to die. Oh, oh, because of, oh, because of me and my house. I've learned that this. I've never been to follow you. I don't want to die. We stupid die. You are not dying anything. We live here together. <laughs> we are living in this world. We are living together. We will, we will be here. So, Peter had quiet thoughts. Not that he was preaching to that he loved Jesus like that, that that's why he said he should not die. He had thought of everything. In fact, he was even enjoying the life he was living at that time. So, better than when he was, he was fishing. But when he was fishing, he was putting so much, he was working, working to get, struggling, working very hard to get money into his family, to get things done. But this time, he's not going to go up and down. He said, do you know what they were doing? Can I help you? They were, they were going on tour. They were throwing the head. They were just throwing. Traveling so like, me taking you from here to Canada. We moved again to Tokyo. Moved again to America. That was what they were doing. And these were being met. Family was enjoying. Nothing was happening. Now, if you had to choose between doing business 
you wake up very early in the morning, you do your business, come back at night, you make money, and your family is okay. And you just follow one man traveling to Canada, to America, and your family is well taken care of, more than even your business. Which, which one will you choose? You just have to be going out there. <laughs> so you think everybody in our house, are we? So Peter was enjoying that life of luxury. That sweet life. That person, the person was not providing that life. <laughs> the person was not the reason for that life. Now they want to die. <laughs> if you see, you let him die. <laughs> you can't go there. You can't go there with rope. You are not dying anything. So Peter, we will die together. We are not, we are not even going to die. So Peter said, you can't die. Yo. I have left my job since that many years ago. I have left my job. I, don't, I can't find my CV again. I can't, I can't find my certificate again. I have burnt it. And you are the one I depend on. You understand? So those were Peter's fears. Why is it just because you should not die? Because uh, you don't know what you are talking about. You are get behind Satan. Because any thought that is not like God is Satan's thought. You understand? It's, it's Satan that put it there. He said, you don't serve all the things of God. You are thinking of, 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 your, of me feeding you, of me taking care of you. That's what you are thinking of. You are an interest to God. You are an interest to the world. You are an interest to me. You understand? So in the midst of that, because, because what was going to be joy for God, joy for the world, was actually going to be a loss for them, Peter, in a sense. Do you understand? And that was why he that when Jesus died, they were scattered. And they went back a fishing. Because they are the source of their livelihood that died. <laughs> Do you understand? They had died. So they went back a fishing. Praise Jesus forevermore. So the process of death, that suffering and all of that, even though it was suffering for Jesus, suffering, death, and all of that, it was going to be great gain for us. But it was in the midst of that hardship, that suffering, and, and all of that, that Peter's words, thoughts were what? Were revealed. So in the midst of those hardships, that, that Peter's thoughts, were confronted. Are you with me, my friends? So God always confronts our secret thoughts, our secret fears in the midst of troubles. Praise Jesus, hey, Mama. Some of you didn't know that if you lose your job, you didn't know that you didn't know how you would you didn't know that you can almost commit suicide. You didn't know. You, you thought that you were fine. You were a great Christian. Kaba shakata. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Rokosha. You have to follow Jesus, however, however, regardless of anything, in the midst of anything, follow Jesus. You didn't know that you are afraid of losing your job, but then you lose that job. God now starts showing you how you were thinking of committing suicide. You now start thinking of, should I cook and drink poison and end it? God now start, God now start showing you how that you actually have secret fears and thoughts. Praise Jesus forevermore. And these secret fears and thoughts are in the world to the life of God. They are hindrance to the flow of God's grace and His power. Praise Jesus forevermore. So look at Psalms 139, verse 23 to 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Can you see that now? Search me, O God, and what? And know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Psalms 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and do what? And know my heart. Try me and do what? And know my thoughts. And know my anxious thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Search me, O God, and know what? My heart. Praise Jesus forevermore. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Hmm. Praise Jesus forevermore. Praise Jesus forevermore. So, our hearts and our thoughts are known in the midst of searching and trying. Search me, God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. <laughs> I follow my friends. Our thoughts are revealed in the midst of what? Try. Try me and know my thoughts. So God permitted Job's trial because he needed to know Job's thoughts. Now what do you know of know Job's thoughts? No matter the sense that reveal my thoughts to me because God knows your thoughts, whether I trust you or not. You understand? But remember, you, you don't even know your own thoughts. 
They try me and know my thoughts. Try me and make my thoughts, bring my thoughts to the open. Let me see how I'm thinking. Let me see my thoughts. Try me. I know my thoughts. Praise Jesus forevermore. So, God permitted the trial of Job because he needed to know what? Know Job's thoughts. And what's the meaning of that? He needed to make Job know his thoughts. He needed to what? Reveal Job's thoughts to him. And I'll show you. I'll try. I'll compress it. I'll finish it today. This is Job's part. I want to move to other things in this teaching next week Sunday by God's grace. He needed to know what? To know Job's thoughts. He needed to make Job see his thoughts. That guy is how you are thinking. You are thinking like a slave. Even though you have plenty of money. Even though you are the richest man in the east. You are still thinking like a slave. You are afraid. You are a fearful person. You are afraid. Your thoughts are not in alignment with my thoughts. Amen. Try me and know my thoughts. So, when God permits Satan to try you, when God permits some trial in your life, what does he want to know? Thoughts, what does he want to know? Your thoughts. I want you to know that he wants you to know your thoughts. He wants to make your thoughts obvious to you. He wants to make your thoughts obvious to you. He wants to reveal your thoughts to you. He wants to make your thoughts clear. He wants you to see the exact way you think. So that you can now judge for yourself whether you are thinking like God or you are thinking like a dog. <laughs> Praise Jesus, my brother. Whether you are thinking like God or you are thinking like a fallen man. Welcome, my brother and my sister. I love you guys. Praise Jesus, my brother. So, God now begins to make your thoughts obvious to you to show you whether you are thinking like God or you are thinking like what? Like a useless man. Because some of us, we wear the finest clothes. But we are the weakest because of our thoughts. We are very weak. We are very useless because of our thoughts. And these are not thoughts of... These are not, I'm not even talking about sinful thoughts. You know, that's also part of it. I follow my friend. I'm talking about falling thoughts. Thoughts of the falling man. Thoughts of the low life. Thoughts of the low quality of life. And how you think is how you will be. Praise Jesus, forevermore. So, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. So, this was even a prayer of the psalmist. I follow my friends. This is the prayer of the what? Of the psalmist. Guys, it must be your prayer. I follow my friends. And please, don't wait till you big, big matters come to confront you. Confront you. Before you start letting go of, of nonsense thoughts, of thoughts that are not like God, that's a, that's a, I'm, I, I have to show you this thing how to think like God. Because when you begin to learn to think like God, you don't have, you don't necessarily have to go through much problems again. Because many times the the, pop, the God's purpose in troubles, in trials, is your thoughts. I tell you, my friends. So when your thoughts are coming to alignment, they're going to try you again. It doesn't need to try you anymore. So God will keep on trying you and can I help you? God only tries you if you want him to try you. God can leave you to die in your thoughts of mediocrity. He can leave you to die in your thoughts of mediocrity. When God is trying to confront your thoughts that are not like him and you keep rebelling, you keep oppo- op- opposing him, he will leave you alone. And when you leave you alone like that with those thoughts that are not like him, you die what? Like a mere man. You are God's only children of the most about what? You die like a mere man. I'll still show you that scripture. Maybe next week. I don't know when I'll get to that scripture. I follow my friends. You don't like me, man, why don't you your thoughts? Amen. So, God searching us, God trying us is not automatic. Amen. God searching us, God trying us is, is by our permission. Is by our permission. Is, is by what? Our permission. God searching us and trying us to know our thoughts about it's by our permission. We have to permit him. You know, sometimes God brings in a sovereign will. Because he has a very he has a purpose for your life. If there's something he wants to actually show out of your life. Sometimes God can try through his sovereign will to reveal our thoughts. Do you understand? But in principle, the searching and the trying of God are a response to what? Our heart cry. Our action. Amen. So if you truly want to live like God, could you begin to ask the Lord that Lord please search my heart? How am I thinking that I'm not thinking like you? That is not like you. Because the way you think is the way you live. And if you want to think like God, if you want to live like God, you have to learn to think like God. Your thoughts are powerful. Your life is powered by your thoughts. 
Praise Jesus. Your life what? If you think that you will be poor, you will be poor. Can I talk to you? Even if you have 100 billion dollars today, you have 100 billion now, 100 billion dollars, and it's for you. You already have houses, you have cars, and all of that, and you have 100 billion dollars. <laughs> if you are thinking in your heart that, hey, what be there, not going to I will be poor. Hey, hope I won't be poor, hope I won't be poor. Can you tell me what happened to you? You will be poor. You will be poor. Because you are already thinking it. You already what? That's why like some people, some people that have money, they try to put their children in the environment where their thoughts can be upgraded, where they can have good thoughts. They never put their children in some, in some schools. I call you my friends. They know what they do, you know. They never live in some areas. They are some people they want their children to mingle with. They know what they are doing. They are, they are, they are programming the thoughts of their children. Because they know that life is a product of thoughts. I follow my friends. They know that what? Life is a product of, of thought. Why do we have seven year old children? Some children in Nigeria, on Nigerian street. You see seven year old boys and girls, they are playing with sand. Is your pair? They are playing with the wear only, only pants on the road. Seven years old, eight, nine, and ten. Seven. Playing with iron, playing with sand. But if you go to some other countries, those guys are already learning how to program stuff. They're already learning how to build stuff. What's the difference? Thoughts. Thoughts. Why do you pick a guy who was living a useless life? You pick him from an area, I think that another area, and his life changes. What, what happened to him? Thoughts. He became, he became exposed to things that will foster a new thought, new thought in his heart. Amen. So life is always what the result of thoughts. Praise Jesus, favor, man. Shout hallelujah. It's always what a result of what? Of thoughts. If you have all the money today, if you are thinking that you will be poor, you will not be poor. You will actually you'll be poor. Because your life will end the way you think. So, try me, O oh God. Search for God and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. So, Job's trial was to reveal his thoughts. And one of the purpose of the revelation of his thoughts was for God to confront it and change his thoughts. You understand me, my friends? Praise Jesus, heaven. Now look at it and see if there be any wicked way in me. Now when you see, and you say, and see if there be any wicked way in me. What are, what are you thinking? If I'm not adulterous, if I'm not thinking of killing somebody, that's not that's not necessary. I told my friends, try me, search me and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there if there be any wicked ways in me. So what are wicked ways? Praise Jesus, heaven. Wicked ways are not just sins and iniquities. They are also thoughts that are opposing to God's thoughts for our lives. I feel like my friends. Wicked ways are not just what? Sins and iniquity. They are also what? Thoughts that are opposing to God's thoughts for our lives. Any thought in your heart that is, that, is, that, is, that is opposing to God's thoughts for your life is what? Is a wicked way. Because that is not the way God wants you to go. It's a wicked way. It's not the way of God. Any way that is not God's way is not God's is, is not what? Any way that is not God's way is a wicked way. And God's way are revealed in his thoughts. Praise Jesus. So wicked ways are not necessarily sinful things, are not necessarily iniquity, are not necessarily bad things. They are they are they are also thoughts that are not that are opposing to God's thoughts for your life. How many of us have a lot of wicked ways living in us? Because <laughs> some of us, you know, do you know many Christians think that the proof of Christianity is that we are suffering, that if I'm suffering, that means I'm a good Christian. How can suffering be the proof of Christianity, the proof of holiness? That if I'm going to walk with God, I have to suffer. You don't have to suffer nothing. I follow my friends. Praise Jesus, forever more. You know, some people are falling sick. They, their life is 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 wrapped up in sickness afflictions and you know and they think it's god they think it's godly they think that's god's plan you know that people think like that they think it's god's plan how can that be god's plan how how tell me can, can that be god's plan it can't so so those people they have a lot of what wicked ways in them <laughs> friends are you following me a lot of wicked ways and some of us have wicked ways in us we have thoughts that are opposing to God's thoughts. 
Wicked ways. Wicked ways. You have limited yourself. Your thoughts are limiting thoughts. Your thoughts, there is no breakthrough in your thoughts. Sorry. No breakthrough in your thoughts. Wicked ways. When you see a person wearing wear, wear a shoe, and you find that that, that, that shoe is one in a 50,000 naira, you are really thinking that that person has backslidden, that is no, he can't, he's a sinner. How can you wear a shoe of one in a 50,000 naira? How? How? When the poor are there? How? How can you? How can you? You ought to be crying. Wicked ways. Why? Because you think that, you think that you have to live a, a low life, a life of mediocrity. Wicked ways. Some of us don't think good things about ourselves. We don't think we are deserving of any good thing. You can't think like that. Those are wicked ways. You must know that you are deserving of all the good things in the world. Can you say, I am deserving of all the good things in the world? I am deserving of all the good things in the world. One more time, I am deserving of all the good things in the world. And why? Because I'm a child of God. Because I'm a child of God. Praise Jesus forevermore. I'm a child of God. I deserve all the good things in this world. So, and, and show me if there be what? If there be any wicked way in me. Oh, praise Jesus forevermore. Look, look at the last statement. And lead me in the way everlasting. You can't walk in the way everlasting but God has comforted and judged your secret thoughts and fears. You understand? You understand now? Search me, try me, show me wicked ways, and lead me in the way everlasting. So when I was sitting in the way everlasting, I want to ascend to the third heavens, I want to, I want to pursue God, I want to enter God, I want to enter the realms of God. But you have low quality. Your thoughts are of low quality. You can't walk in any way everlasting. The way everlasting is for men of high thoughts. Do you understand? What are the men of high thoughts? Men that think like God. Well, the way everlasting here, the causes I'm talking about is not just, is, I'm not talking of only life and fear of God. Do you understand? I'm talking of that God life, living like God, living as a king, commanding your destiny, commanding your city, commanding your territory, commanding your business to go in the direction that God wants you to go. Living like God. And lead me in the way everlasting. Praise Jesus forevermore. So there's a way called the way everlasting. It's the, it's the very path of God. To walk in the path of God, you must live in the thoughts of God. Do you understand? To walk in the paths of God, you must live in the thoughts of God. So, God must confront your secret thoughts. He must confront, you must confront those fears in your heart. He must confront the wicked ways in your heart. If he's going to lead you in the way everlasting. If he's going to lead you in the way everlasting in your marriage. He's going to live in the way everlasting in your business. He's going to live in the way everlasting in your health, in your career, in your finances. In whatever way, he must do what? Confront your secret thoughts. He must confront your fears. He must reveal the wicked ways. Where you are thinking of the low quality of life. Many of us are not delivered from the low quality of life. Not because we are not fasting and praying enough. But because we are not thinking like God. You're not thinking like God. Praise Jesus forevermore. And lead me in there in the way everlasting. God has to lead us in the way everlasting. I mean, I was going to walk in the way everlasting. That's the path God has ordained for us to walk. The way everlasting. The path of God. Do you think God would, would be in a marriage? God and God marry themselves. And the marriage it, it, and it will become a broken marriage. Talk to me. Do you think it will be? Do you think God, God married God? Do you think that that marriage will break? Do you think, do you think it will be destroyed? God is doing a business. Do you think that business, do you think that business will be destroyed? It wouldn't. That's the kind of life God wants for you. I tell you, my friends, that's the way everlasting. The way everlasting is 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 the very ways of God. The way the way the way things are in God's hand. The way things turn out. Do you, think God, do you think God will be in a career and that career will not blossom? It will blossom. God's business will blossom. You understand? But God wants to also work in that way everlasting. 
the task of God. But the only way to work is, the, is to, for him to confront your secret fears, your secret thoughts, the wicked ways in your heart. Praise Jesus. And you must allow him. You must surrender your thoughts that are not like God to God. You must surrender, surrender to him and let him help you. You must think like God. Praise Jesus forevermore. Look at Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 to 13. And God is very interested in comforting our secret thoughts. And he's a specialist as this, if, if you are lying to do it. He's a specialist. Because that's the only way for us to walk in the way everlasting. I'm trying to rush now because I want to finish the emphasis right now. Today. Praise Jesus forevermore. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 to 13. Hebrews 4 verse 12 to 13. So look at it. For the word of God is what? Is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing, even what? For the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and of marrow. And is the discerner of what? Of the thoughts and intents of the heart. <laughs> you understand, my friends? So, God is so much interested in our thought process, in our thought pattern, that, that His very word is a tool for that purpose. Guys, do you understand now? Do you understand now? That God is so much what, interested in what? In our thought process, in our thought pattern, that was, that even His word is what? Is the very tool for that purpose. Praise Jesus forever. Shout hallelujah. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edges word. Placing even to the dead, dividing and sunder of some. I don't have time to explain this scripture, there's no time. But let me just tell you. The very nasunder of some and spirit, let me just read it to you. And of the joints and, and marrow, and the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. See that now? That's God's word. So, can you see God's interest in searching out your thoughts? Can you see that, that the psalmist was, was in alignment? Do you understand? He was praying according to God's purpose. Because the Bible said this is what God's word does. So that means he was actually asking that God should come and what? God's word should come and fulfill his purpose in his life. It was, very, it, was a, it, was, it was a kingdom prayer in alignment with God's will. Because this is the purpose of God's word. So every time God's word is coming to you, what, what, is, God, what, is, God, what is God coming to do? He's coming to search your thoughts, to discern your heart. God's word is a very potent tool. For the confrontation of our secret fears. Do you understand? Do you get? God's word is what? Is a very potent to what? For the confrontation of what? Our secret fears. That's not that when pastor is preaching. You can see this part. You see the pastor is talking to. <laughs> Have you had that feeling before? I don't think you are just in church and pastor is just preaching. Just, ah, ah, this means that pastor is talking to. Why is pastor talking to me like this? Why? Why? He's not pastor that's talking to you like that. He's going to that is doing what? Confronting your secret thoughts I must align and when the word comes like that don't just enjoy it let it do his work when God has revealed to you those thoughts that are not, that are not in alignment with God's thoughts just surrender those thoughts surrender it on, on the altar of sacrifice let them go let the thoughts of mediocrity, let, of mediocrity go let the thoughts of smallness go embrace God's thoughts for your life friends are you with me? so the word of God is God's tool for confronting our thoughts is a potent weapon in God's hand. So whenever you are reading God's word, whenever you are listening to God's word, however God is coming to you in a dream, in a vision, however, what, what is the very purpose? To confront your thoughts, to discern your heart. Why? Because your thoughts are the product or your thoughts are the outcome of your life. You understand? Or your life is the outcome of your thoughts. Your thoughts are the, are, the, are the building blocks for your life. Your thoughts are the material with which your life is built. They are the material. So God has to make sure that they are of, they are of quality. If you build a house with low quality materials, all, all, all of the house to crumble, to collapse. So God has to, because your thoughts are the build, building materials, the building block for your life, God has to make sure that they are quality thoughts. You understand? That they are what? Quality thoughts. So that what? The life can be what? A quality life. I don't know if you want a quality life here. You want quality marriage, quality business, quality finance, quality life. You must have quality thoughts. And those are God's thoughts. 
So you must let God, you must surrender your own thoughts as God begins to confront you every time, every year now with his word. As he confronts you with his word, you must what? Have what? You must do what? You must surrender your thoughts and pick up God's thoughts. Praise Jesus forevermore. So now go back to the, the book of Job. Go back to the, to the book of Job. Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2. I'll be very fast now. I'm going to close in the next 20, 25 minutes. Job chapter 2. As I said, I'm going to close. You better be praying for me. I'm going to allow me to quickly close, as I said. <laughs> so be, and you to be fast in your heart in receiving the word. And I, I love that. So you guys are really receiving the word. I, can, I know it. I can feel it. I, I don't feel any blockage. You are receiving the word. Praise Jesus forevermore. Job chapter 2. Now watch it. Now, mind you, Job has been tried in chapter 1. What else is left? Do you understand? Job has been tried in chapter 1. But I think that was not enough. Look at chapter 2. From verse 1 to 10. And there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan said, answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Then God said again, And Lord said unto Job, unto Satan, As thou concern my servant Job, that there is not like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, and eschewed evil, and still loaded fast, look at that, and still loaded fast what is integrity, although thou movest me against him, to destroy him without cause. You understand? So, Concerning Satan and Job, because I'm just measuring with, with towards Satan, I don't know how to explain that to you, his integrity towards God and his life towards... Now, you know, you know, you know we have a life towards God, towards man and towards Satan. You understand? We have a life towards God. You understand? A life towards man and a life towards Satan. We are continuing to live a life of victory against Satan. Do you understand? And Satan is always also looking out because he's the accuser of the brethren. Talking, Satan is what? So we have the life towards him to ensure that he does not see a place to accuse us. You understand? But even if he sees a place to accuse us, God is our justifier. He justifies us. You understand? But let's make sure that we don't we don't give room for Satan for the accusations of Satan. There's no time. Because when it comes to accusation, when Satan begins to accuse, he's, accu- he's accusing on the basis of legality. And in the spiritual framework of things, when it has come to legality, to God's principle, because in God has said the principles of the spiritual framework. So when God says, when Satan says, if now Satan begins to accuse a man before God, that God, look at this guy, you have said in your word that you should not do this, and if you do this, 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 this is... When it comes to legality, sometimes God and God's hand are folded. You understand, my friends? When it comes to what? Legality. That's why I say we should have the life towards Satan. Not that we are so conscious of Satan. See, so if you can live a life towards God correctly, you, you are living a life towards Satan correctly. You understand, my friends? If you can live a life towards God and man correctly, you are living correctly towards Satan. I follow you, my friend. Because most times, Satan's basis for accusing us is our life towards man and God. You understand? There is no. When, is our life towards what? Man and God. So when the reflection of your life towards man, in the future in your, in your life towards man, then your life towards Satan has been touched. Satan now has a legal ground. Can I, he can even present it to God. And sometimes, in most cases, God cannot do anything. Sometimes God, God can bring in his sovereign will. Like the case of, of, of Zechariah, of, you know, what was the name of, of what? Joshua of Joshua the high priest. That was that Satan was at his right hand resisting him. You understand? Because he was wrong in that matter. He was wrong. Satan would not be accused of anything if he was not wrong. That was what he had included with sackcloth. His garment had been changed in his spirit. His priest would have, you understand? He, had, he was, he was seedy. He was wrong. Do you get? So Satan, Satan was actually in the right, in quote. Do you understand? Satan had the legal ground. But God showed supremacy. God showed sovereignty. And I said, leave him alone. Now, that's why that's when God, God was talking. He said, the Lord will book you. Even the Lord of hosts will book you. So on this ground, only God can now, only God, God can have his own righteousness to rebook Satan. You understand? Because that man's righteousness in God has been touched. Satan are now at the legal ground. So it now takes God himself. It now, now takes veto power. God is obedient for Satan. <laughs> and that what is allowed. Because God, God can, because we are God's children. He can, now, he can now use his own, he can now use his own stuff for us to defend us against Satan. Even when we go wrong. Even Satan has the right to accuse us. I follow my friends. 
but don't always allow that because that is the sovereignty of God you can't control God's sovereignty and God will not always use sovereignty every time because it's also a, man, it's also a person of principle so in that case Joshua the priest was wrong but the Bible now says the Lord rebukes you even the Lord of hosts rebuke you so an angel could never rebook Satan that's the thing the Lord himself and he said, even, he now that he said, even the Lord do you understand? So God had to use his sovereignty. Well, Satan was actually right in that case. And when God's sovereignty, now, when God's sovereignty comes into play, they, we have gone past the ground of legality. God's sovereignty is higher than the ground of legality. Are you my friends? God's sovereignty speaks so much of, of this mercy seat. You understand? There's pardon at the mercy seat. Praise Jesus forevermore. Oh, shout hallelujah. His sovereignty speaks so much of what? Of his mercy. And the Bible says that what? Mercy does what? Prevails over judgment. Amen. He's talking very much of God's sovereignty there. Because what, what, what Joshua was having then was, was judgment. If they place it on the ground of legality, what was what Joshua was having of? Judgment. But the, God now said, if I, if I leave this with set on the ground of legality, with the way these guys are going guy, if I leave it as legality on that ground, on that premise, he has defeated Joshua. We have to judge this guy. So let's now move away from the court. Let's now bring it to my chambers. Hiya! There are some cases that God moves away from the court to. He brings it to his very chamber, his, his bedroom, his parlor. When it's his parlor, it's no longer like that. It's now what? It's messy. When the only thing in that parlor, in that, in that place, is messy. It's messy seat. Do you understand? It's messy seat. Praise Jesus forevermore. Were you blessed by that? So, don't always allow Satan's accusation. And how do you ensure that? Ensure you have a life, your life towards God. I have to mark those man is accurate. But I tell you, and I have to let you know, so that Satan will not also accuse you. Even when you go wrong on the ground of accusation, and Satan is right, there is still what a ground of what mercy with God. There is a ground of God's sovereignty. Because many of us have thought that because we are wrong on the issue, that Satan has to destroy us. He has to have it. No, he doesn't have to. There is still that ground of what sovereignty. The only ground of God is not the ground of legality. There is a the ground of sovereignty. The ground of mercy. Because some of those children have, have answered to the destruction of Satan, they have answered to Satan's affliction because they, because they know that they were wrong on that case. But if, even if you were wrong, you understand? Even if any man sin, we have what? An advocate with the Father. You understand? So the ground of sovereignty, the ground of, 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 of mercy, the ground of advocacy, the blood of Jesus. Praise Jesus heaven. The way you guys are even looking at me, God, I'm not saying too much. I'm not saying, I'm not saying too many things at the same time. Praise Jesus heaven. It's not hallelujah. No, no, no. Every time, every, 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 every time I'm teaching you, whatever the topic, I'm teaching you new creation reality and I'm teaching you kingdom. Do you understand? Praise Jesus heaven. But I, we have to be very balanced in our Christian life and know everything. Praise Jesus heaven. Shout hallelujah. So, I love it on the Satan, verse 3. Love it on unto Satan. As God is not my servant, Job, that is not like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, what I fear when I, I share it evil, and still hold his fast in integrity, even though thou move me against him, the strength without a cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. Now, Satan has the all that Job had. It was not left with Job. You understand? Can I help you again, my friends? What, what is left after he had destroyed everything, his children, everything he had was gone? Now, Satan now says, Skin for skin. Huh? No, 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 no argue. The first thing, what all Satan argue, argument, because you have blessed him and you have kept all, all the things that he had. The Satan still have that argument this time. He didn't have it. But Satan still thought that, okay, if you touch Job's, Job's health, he will cause God. Now say, I want to show you something. And Satan answered the Lord and says, skin for skin, yeah, all that a man will give for his life. I don't have time. I want to close this Job emphasis today. All that the man will lay, have will for his life. But put for, for thy hand and touch his blood and his flesh, and he cause it to thy face. And Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So when, so, when Satan fought from the presence of the Lord, and smote him with, with sore boys from the sole, sole of his foot unto his crown, and he took him a pot shirt to scrap himself with that, and he sat down among the ashes, then said his wife unto him, Does thou still retain thy integrity, and cause God and die? That's why you should cause God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speaketh as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall we receive good at the end of God and shall we not receive evil? In all this did did not give sin with his lips. So what, what do we find here? Even with all the all the trials, all the testings, 
Job did not see what? Sin. But I want to share something. Who called Satan's attention the first time? God. Who called his attention the second time? Who called his attention the second time? It's God. No, it's clear here. And the Lord said unto Satan. Verse 3. So, the first time God was God was all called was Satan's attention. Second time God was going to also call your Satan's attention. God will not give up until he has fully confronted all our secret fears. He won't give up. So even though all that job had, had gone, one of the secret fears was also was his own health. <laughs> Do you understand? Do you understand now? Assuming his health was also one of the secret fears, I follow my friends, everything will have ended in the first trial. But see, God has started the job of confronting his thoughts. God has to finish that job. God will not, God will not give up unto what He has fully confronted all our secret fears. Or has fully confronted all our thoughts. Now you don't find out that this is the thought, the fear about his health was only part of his thoughts. Because God is now in chapter 3, verse 25. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I, I was afraid of is come unto me. So everything that happened to Job. I you my friend, they were all included in his words, in his thoughts, in his fears, including his health. So, at the time that, 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 said, that God has permitted Satan to do all what he did in chapter 1 to, to Job, do you understand? The secret fears in Job's heart are not fully confronted. And if God leaves any thoughts, any secret fears unconfronted, you can't come into the fullness of God's life. So God allows Satan to go all the way that we must fully crush all these guys' secret fears. You know, God, you know, even though Satan knows that that was what God was doing. Are you my friends? Yes, what God was doing was, that, was, was, was to change Job, Job's attitude, was to change his thoughts so that he can bring Job into, into that very glorious life. Satan was just thinking that he was just tempting, just tempting, just tempting for 26. Let's just tempt him. God, God's very intention was to bring Job into the very glorious life of God, was to lead him in the way everlasting, in the very fullness of the God life. In the very face of God's purposes, are you following my friends? So, it's time of be fully compliant with that life. Are you following my friends? It's time of be fully compliant with the, with the thoughts of God. That's why I can come into that life, into the fullness of that life. But we now find that even after the first trial, that the first temptation, there were still thoughts in Job's heart. That were not God's thoughts. They were thoughts about his health. What does God think about our health? I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Even as us, that is so prosperous. But what was Job thinking about his health? What the day will not come that my health will be destroyed. Even though he was healthy, what the day will not come that I will become very sick. God also had to what? Confront that thought. I feel him now, my friends. So, God does not end. He does not finish until he has fully confronted our thoughts. Because we must fully be compliant with God's thoughts. So that we can what? Come into the fullness of life. Now let me begin to show you what I'm talking about. That actually, what God was looking for was Job's thoughts. So that you cannot believe me. <laughs> because I know some of you have not believed me since, since last week as I've been talking about this thing. Now look at Job. I've, I've read it. I read from chapter 1 to the, I read Sasha and Sasha. So let me just let me save you of all the readings. Now just go to Job chapter. What I want to show you now that what God was confronting is what? Job's thoughts. Already, already chapter 3 already shows us what things I feared. You understand? But let me now show you that that was what God was actually doing. Now go to chapter 38. Job chapter 38, verse 1 to 2. And I'll begin to, to try to close. Job 38. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus forevermore. Now if you just look at Job chapter... Job chapter 38. Job 38. Now look at verse verse 1. Job 38 verse verse 1 and 2. So now Job, Job's friend had talked. Elia, uh, Eliu and all of that. His three friends, Eliezer and all of that. And the fourth guy. Do you understand? All of them had what? Have spoken. Job too had what? <coughs> have spoken. So who was now speaking now? God. God now began to respond. God now began to what? Answer Job. Now look at the first thing that God, Job, that God said. Job 38 verse 1 and 2. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, verse 2, 
Who is this? <laughs> that darkness cancelled by words without knowledge. Oh my. Praise Jesus forevermore. Who is this that what? That darkness cancelled by what? By words without knowledge. Praise Jesus forevermore. So, who is this that is covering my counsel? You are obscuring my counsel. You are arguing my counsel by speaking ignorantly. Why? Because you are ignorant of my counsel in this matter. First, I need to give me this last 10 minutes. And let me just close this teaching. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Who is this that darkness what? Counsel by words without what? Knowledge. They must say many things. Even they didn't sin against God. Do you understand, my friends? But God said, no, 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 no. In all of you, all of you, including Job, your response is, and I was not talking to Job in particular, who is this person that is that darkened counsel without knowledge? What is counsel? God's purpose, God's intention. You understand? Why are you darkening my counsel? Why are you making my counsel in this matter obscure? By speaking ignorantly. I follow my friend. So at this point, Job had not come to pick the counsel of God in the matter. He was speaking as though there was, there was something different that God was addressing. I'm going away. I follow my friends. Who is this that document what? Counsel. Counsel, purpose, intentions by words without knowledge. Without knowing what the counsel is. Without knowing what I'm actually after. Why are you speaking to obscure my counsel? To make it to make clear. Look at uh, uh, let, me, let me look at that Bible passage in ba- Bible in basic English. Bas- Bible in basic BB. 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 Job 38, verse 1 and 2. I look at it in four in four transla- in three translations. And Lord made answer to Job out of the storm wind and said, Now look at verse 2. BB. Who is who is who is this? Who makes the purpose of God dark by words without knowledge? <coughs> Amen. So, Job speaking concerning what had happened to him, even though I was trying to still justify God and, and not put blame on God, do you know that Job did not put blame on God? He was even trying to justify God in the matter and make himself as a sinner, as someone who has gone wrong. Do you, if you read it very well, Job was trying to make himself the bad guy. Do you understand? That maybe he has done so bad that God is... And, you know, I'm making trying to justify God. But God said, No, 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 no. You are making my purpose, the purpose of God, dark by what's done on it. My purpose in this matter, you very you very reviewed it. You have to reveal it. Oh no, that you are praising me, that you are praising me, that you are saying I've done well, I, I didn't do bad, I didn't do evil, that you are the bad guy. You are not yet seeing my purpose, you are still obscuring my purpose. You don't see my purpose. Because I have a purpose. My purpose is not to pray. It's not for you to praise me in the matter. It's not for you to let your friends know that I'm a good God. That is not my plan in this matter. You are darkening my counsel. You are hiding my purpose in this matter. I have a purpose. You know, in all these things that have happened to you, my plan is not to show myself. It's not for you to now tell your brother, hey, you know this happened to me. God is still a good God. He's a great father. You know, you can't blame for anything. I am to be blamed. Don't say, no, that's not. Don't praise me. Don't worry. Don't worry. I have a purpose and you still have purpose. Don't darken that purpose. Look at it in NIV. Praise Jesus forevermore. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is it that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? <laughs> Do you understand? So, Job, God had a plan in all the that happened to Job and he's not seen it. He was still causing God's plan. He said, Why are you hiding my plan? Let your friends know the real matter. <laughs> Job knew what God's plan was. But he was you, you know, why are you hiding? Why are you obscuring it? Why are you obscuring? Why are you hiding my plans? You don't want your friends to know that you are a weak guy. I'm going somewhere else. Job knew what the matter was. He said, Who is this that darkened counsel? That means he knew the counsel. But he sent to dark him, sent to hide it. Because he wants to feel this. He wants want to still remain that spiritual guy. Because he didn't want to know that he was that weak in his thoughts. I told him, my friends, why are you unspoiling my plans? Why are you hiding my plans? Let's go again. Look at, look at it in the message. The message translation. And now, finally, God answered Job from the high violence storm. He said, why do you confuse the issue? <laughs> Wait, this is very normal. This is not about our things. It's not about God. Why do you confuse the issue? Ma, ma, daru, ma, daru, you, you, ma, daru, only because I don't far. No, confuse the issue. Why do you confuse the issue? You don't confuse the issue. You know what you are talking about now. Why you tell your friends? Confess to tell your friends. 
You didn't say yes. I'm a good girl. Yes. But tell your friends what we are, what we are, what we are, what we are dealing with. Tell your friends. Why well, don't confuse the issue? Why are you hiding it? Why do you talk without knowing what you are talking about? You don't know what you are talking about. You are confusing the issue. And follow my friends. You are confusing what? The issue. You are trying to bring my good and you are trying to, to justify a lot of that to now confuse the issue. You are trying to hide the real issue. My confusion of your thoughts under what? My goodness. That God is good. God is good. Say, don't confuse the issue. So you understand more. Praise Jesus. Say that more. Say what? Don't confuse the issue. Are you with my friends? Can I really say, say this? Say this. If I look at the next Bible, Bible chapter, and we close. In the midst of your troubles, don't just look for a way out. Also look for the intentions and interest of God. Do you understand, my friends? In the midst of your troubles, don't just look for a way out. Also what? Look for the intentions and what? And interest of God. Look for the intentions and interest of God. What is God's interest in this matter? What is his purpose? Because some of those cases, he's, he's God of solutions are looking for. God of solution. God. Oh God of solution. Solution night. Solu- three nights of solution. <laughs> but have you found out God's interest in that matter? What is God's purpose? Look for his interest. Why? Okay, Lord, what do you want to achieve in this? What do you want? What, what is it? What is it? What is the matter? And then you know how to deal with Satan accurately. If you know, if you find out what God's plan is, what God's intention is, okay, okay, God, we found out. Okay, now let's deal with Satan. Let's stop Satan's hand. Many of us keep praying, praying. No, let it stop. Die. End. End. It will not end. Why? Because we, we don't have the ground to accurately confront Satan. Because we have not found out God's interest and his purpose. And we are not, we are not really doing what with God's interest and purpose. Great to Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Now look at Job chapter 40 verse 1. 40 verse 1. Verse 1 to 3. Job 40. I've, I've compared this, this message for you people. Verse 1 to 3. Job 40. Verse 1. To three, where is it? Is it 40? Oh, glory to Jesus forevermore. Is Job 40 the last wait? The KJV, Job 40. Okay, Job 40. Ah, oh, no, no, I've, I've missed the mistake. Is it 42? 42. Oh, thank you, 42. Ah, that is good to have people that know Bible in your church. Your, your, your message, your fine message was given, just scatter at the end. Job chapter 40. Why did I write chapter 40? I was tired. I was preparing the message. Job chapter 40. Now look at verse 42, rather. I'm sorry. Chapter 42. Look at verse 1 to 3. Then Job, look at KJV. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou. Now, who was answering again now? Job. God has said, don't darken words, don't darken counsel with words without knowledge. Don't, don't hide the real issue. After every confrontation, like God, God has said, yeah, let's talk about the real matter. What did, what did Job now say? Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that that can do everything. And that what? No thoughts can be withholding from you. Can you understand now? And that what? No thoughts can be withholding from you. So, hey, God, so you were looking at uh, ah, God, I now agree that no thoughts can be withholden from you. You see now? So, after all the confrontations, and then I spoke to him, don't hide the matter. Let us say what the matter is. Say what the real matter is. Now say, no thoughts can be withholden from you. So, what, so what was God after in Job's life? That Job had now come to realize? His thoughts. His what? His thoughts. His thoughts. His thoughts. Praise Jesus. His thoughts. No thoughts can be returning from you. So, my God, I now admit that, okay, actually, my thought was all you were after since all these days, in all these struggles. No, I didn't know that I couldn't hide my thoughts from you. I didn't know. I didn't know that in the midst of all my fasting and prayer, in the midst of all my holiness and fearing you, in the midst of offering all those sacrifices, in the midst of those good lives, I didn't know that you could still see my quiet thoughts, my fears. Lord, I didn't know. Now I know. Guys, you understand now? No, Lord, now I know. You were after my thoughts. So Job was now beginning to admit and to repent. 
No thoughts can be withholding from you. Page verse seven. Who is it that I did cancel with Daniel? Therefore, have I uttered that which I understood not? Things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Oh, praise Jesus forevermore. Praise Jesus forevermore. Look at it in, in the message translations. Look at it in the message translation. Look at that verse 3. That's verse 3 in the message translation. You asked. That's God asking. Just speaking that God asked. Who is this more than the water? Ignorantly confusing what? Ignorantly confusing the issue. Second, guess, second guessing my purpose. He said you asked. Job was saying you asked. Who is this more than the, with the water? Ignorantly confusing the issue. Second guessing my purpose. I admit it. I was the one. I babbled on about things far beyond me. Made, made small talk about wonders way over my head. I was the one confusing the issue. I didn't the matter. And now, what, 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 what was now his admission of the matter? Thoughts. Praise Jesus forevermore. No thoughts can be withdrawn from you. No thoughts. Praise Jesus just forevermore. You see my thoughts. Lord, I now, I now agree as well. You are after my thoughts. You are, you are after my thoughts. So, Job has begun to surrender here. Look at, look at it up to, look at it up to verse 5. Verse 4 and 5. Here I beseech thee and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare unto, unto me. I have had thee by the hearing of the year. But now my eyes at what? I see you. I have heard formerly that God is after the hidden thoughts of the heart. I have heard that God will always come for our thoughts. I have heard that God's, that God, God's purpose was to have, to have to think like him. And he confronts our very thoughts. But I didn't know that he goes this far. Now I have what? seen it with my own eyes. That you come for our secret thoughts. I see it with my own eyes. That you come for our secret fears. And Lord, I surrender. And what happened after Job had come? Now, after, after all of this has happened, what happened next? God, God blessed Job. There's no time. I don't want to, I, I want us to close now. God, Job, God blessed Job. He said Job was right. He said Job is the one that is right in this matter. He said they have spoken right. And when he did speak right, he had not spoken right when he was admitted that it was what he thought that God was after. And God blessed him so much. So God is not afraid of blessing us. Do you understand? He's not afraid of blessing us. But he wants our thoughts to be transformed to his thoughts. God bless Job so much, so much, so much. Can you understand now? So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and blah, blah, blah. Can you understand now? So God really wants to bless us. God is not afraid of blessing us. But he doesn't want our thoughts to stay the same. Can you understand? God is not what? Afraid of blessing us. But he doesn't want our thoughts thoughts to stay the same. We want our thoughts to, really, to be what? in alignment with his thoughts. So guys, God is after our thoughts. But that is what will make us what? live like him and look like him. Can we begin to just talk to the Lord? In the next two minutes, can you just talk to the Lord and talk to him? Can you just talk to God? That Lord, confront my secret thoughts. Confront the fears of my heart. Lord, please come to me. Confront my fears. Confront my thoughts. I am not like you. So I can walk in the way everlasting. I can walk in the path everlasting. Search out my thoughts, O oh God. Search out my heart. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts, dear Lord. Confront my thoughts. Confront my heart. Confront my heart. Search my thoughts. So that I can begin to think like you. What are the thoughts of my heart that are not like your thoughts that are not like you? Please confront my thoughts. Confront my heart. Transform my thoughts to your thoughts. Transform my heart to your heart. Rada baba ba shaka talabra. Lord, help me to begin to think like you. Put your thoughts in my heart. Put your thoughts in my heart. Transform my thoughts. Transform my thoughts. I don't want to think like a falling man. I don't want to think after the falling heart, after the falling nature. I want to think like you, dear Lord. Put thoughts of greatness in my heart. Can you pray and tell the Lord? Put thoughts of greatness in my heart. Put your thoughts in my heart. Put the thoughts of greatness in my heart, dear Lord. Oh, be bo 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 shaka talabalados. Oh, katalabrada beshas. Ragine me 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 tokos of kredadish. Oh, balatos of fenegadishes. Radila kalabalabababash. Put your thoughts of greatness. The thoughts of greatness. Put them in my heart. Deliver me from falling thoughts. Deliver me from low thoughts. Deliver me from my secret fears. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Deliver me, dear Lord. 
rather than ocean, from my secret fears, from my falling thoughts, from the thoughts of the falling order. Let my thoughts align with your thoughts, dear Lord. Let me think thoughts of greatness. Let me think like you, dear Lord. Oh, bo 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 shaka tala bala bala.